This video is continuing right where the previous one left off. We are continuing with part 035, user defined functions. And in this video, we're going to talk about anonymous functions. Anonymous functions are basically a way to create a function in MATLAB without saving it to a separate M file. You can just create the function and use it in the same file that you're writing your code in. Now, there are some limitations. One is you can only have one returned value from anonymous functions. And also, the calculation, the code that the function actually executes should all fit on one line of code. But it's still useful if you're going to be doing the same calculation over and over again in different parts of your code for organizational purposes. And anonymous functions are going to be saved into a variable. It's a little weird. So here we have a variable that contains a function. So in this first example, I create an anonymous function, which I have put into a variable named equad for no particular reason other than it calculates a quadratic equation right here. And the way you create anonymous functions is you determine the variable name, set it equal to, then use the at symbol as if you're writing like an email address, and then parentheses and inside those parentheses, any inputs to the anonymous function that you want to have. So I just put in x. And then after those parentheses, the calculation that you want your function to run. So then for reasons that I do not remember at all, I created a variable named apple, gave it the values zero through four, a vector of values, passed those values into my anonymous function in the exact same way I would call any other function using the function's name, parentheses, and then the information passed to it, and then setting a variable equal to the results. Control enter. When I save my anonymous function into a variable, it displays out this result here if I don't suppress my output with a semicolon. And then I echoed out the apple vector. And then this is my result after passing the apple vector through my function named equad. Now we can save our anonymous function to a file if we want to. And this is the same way that we can save any variable in the workspace. We simply say save the name of the file we want to save it to and then one or more variables or no variables, in which case the entire workspace will be saved, that we want saved into that file. So let me run this section. And it's hard to notice, but right over here, this new file has been created, myquadratic.mat, and then scrolling down. So I'm gonna just run the function again, except let's see it not work, right? So if I don't load it in and I clear off the workspace, I get an error, undefined function for this input. MATLAB doesn't know what I'm talking about. However, if I load in that file first, which basically just loads that anonymous function into the workspace, well, then this code works perfectly. Anonymous functions can have multiple inputs and we just put those inputs inside the parentheses. So here's a function that I've named a sine squared and I set it equal to at the two inputs that I want to use, which I have chosen to name A and B. These are just variable names. You could name them whatever. And then the calculation that I want performed. And running this line of code is effectively the same as putting this code right here in a separate MATLAB file and then calling the function as we would normally do. I passed in two inputs to the function, two and pi over two, and my result is two right here. It works on vectors as well. So there's my result with some vectors. Now follow along as I create an anonymous function named difference that takes two inputs and returns the absolute value of the difference between the inputs. So difference is my function name, is my variable name. I'm gonna set that equal to at parentheses. Um, I'm gonna name my inputs X and Y, doesn't really particularly matter. And then I want to get the absolute value of the difference between X and Y. And now I'm gonna run this section, control enter. And this is my printout just to verify that it worked correctly. So what's the difference between eight and three? It should be five and it is five. What's the difference between three and eight? Should be the same thing, not negative, right? And in fact, it is. Now the at sign can also be used to create what are called function handles. We can create a new name or you can think of it as like a nickname for various functions in MATLAB. For example, on most calculators, the log button is log base 10, but in MATLAB, log is log base e, the natural number, which on most calculators would be ln. And the natural log doesn't even exist as a function. So maybe we wanna fix that. Well, what we can do is we can say ln, our new function handle, a nickname or name for another function, equals at log. And so now when I run this section, 
what is the log of e raised to the first power? Well, it's 1. And what's the natural log of e raised to the first power? Well, it's the same thing, because those two functions are literally the same. And if it's 2, then the output is 2, and so on. We can even replace the log base 10 if we want. So here's what it is before, right? Log of 1,000 is not going to be 3, because it's log base e of 1,000, right? It's apparently 6.9, and so on for these outputs. But after I redefine log as meaning log base 10, and then I run these again, now the log here is log base 10. Now you have to be judicious about doing this, otherwise you're going to rename stuff and confuse yourself. But I think this could be uh, a useful thing to do if you get confused by log versus uh, log 10 versus ln. Maybe we want to write out the cosine function as cosine rather than the abbreviation of cos. Now if I just try and run this right here, it doesn't work. There's no such function as cosine. However, if I say cosine equals at cos, well then the cosine of pi is just negative 1. So in this video we saw how to create anonymous functions, just short little functions that you don't need a separate m file for using the at symbol, and then also saw use of the at symbol for creating function handles, basically an alternative name or a nickname for various other functions. And that's all saved in the workspace, so you do have to rerun that code if you start a new session of MATLAB. Oh, and all of this works in Octave as well.